What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna be putting together a super small form factor third generation Ryzen APU build using the new Ryzen 3 3200G. By the time this is finished, we'll have a really small gaming PC slash HTPC slash emulation setup that only measures 7.9 inches by 7.9 inches by 3.3 inches tall. I do want to mention before we get started, when putting together a super small form factor PC like this, we're kind of throwing upgradability out the window right off the bat. We're not going to be able to add a dedicated GPU to this later on down the road. CPU upgradability is going to be sparse, and storage space is kind of tight in this thing. So you could take the same amount of money you're going to spend on a small form factor build like this and build a mini tower, and later on you'll have enough room to upgrade the CPU, add a dedicated GPU, and more drives. But if you're like me and you love these small form factor builds, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing on the list is the CPU, otherwise known as an APU because we have the built-in graphics. I chose the new Ryzen 3200G. This is coming in at $99. We have four cores, four threads, a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz, and a boost clock of 4 gigahertz. We also have built-in Vega 8 graphics at 1250 megahertz with a TDP of 65 watts. When I was originally planning this build, I was actually going to go with the Ryzen 5 3400G, which is a little bit of an upgrade out of the box over the Ryzen 3 3200G, but it would have upped the cost on this build significantly. It's 50 more dollars, plus it comes with a taller cooler. I would have had to buy an aftermarket cooler to fit in here. I did test it out, and even with the aftermarket cooler that I chose and an extra fan inside, I was still running really hot with the 34. So I decided to go with the 3200G, and it actually does a really good job. By the end of this video, you'll see a ton of tests that I performed on this thing, and if you're interested in checking out the performance of the 3400G, I have a full review video. I'll leave a link in the description. So as for the motherboard, we have to go Mini-ITX to fit it inside of this case. So I opted for the ASRock Fatality B450 Gaming Mini-ITX. Unfortunately, with the B450 and the X470 motherboards, you will have to upgrade the BIOS before it's compatible with the third generation Ryzen. Now, AMD is offering a loaner chip. They did this last time they released the second generation Ryzens. I'll leave a link for that in the description. Or you could just hold out for the B550 motherboards or overspin on an X570. The Fatality B450 does have an M.2 slot in the bottom for storage, and you can opt to go this route if you'd like to, or you could just use an SSD or a mechanical drive, and we'll get to that in a second. RAM speed and configuration is very important for these Ryzen APUs. You definitely want to use dual channel, and I don't recommend anything under 3000 MHz. A lot of the 2400 MHz can be overclocked at 3000, but the higher, the better. The built-in GPU relies on this memory, so the faster it is, the better performance you can get out of it. I've personally seen FPS gains up to 20% from going from 2400 MHz to 3200 MHz, so the faster, the better. I'm going to be using 16 gigabytes of Team Force Vulcan Z RAM at 3200 MHz out of the box. Since we're working with such a small case, you're going to need a power supply that fits inside of here. I opted for a 150 watt Pico power supply along with a 12 volt, 12 amp power brick. Now this will put out 140 watts and it's plenty for the 3200G. And if you're not familiar with these Pico power supplies, this is it plugged into the motherboard right now. We have power to the CPU, power to our main pins, and it also has connectors to power our SATA drives. And finally, the case. This is the AO1 All Aluminum Mini ITX case available on Amazon. You can get them in black, red, or silver. They also have a tempered glass version, but unfortunately, there's just not enough airflow for this APU. So I stuck with the vented aluminum top. It's a very basic case. There are two USB 3.0 ports out on one side. Got a front power button, front LED, and it also has this hard drive bracket. We're not going to be using this because it's going to block airflow from our APU, so we're going to be placing the hard drive on the side. Or like I mentioned at the beginning, you could opt for a high capacity M.2. There's lots of different options for storage. You can do a mechanical drive, you can do a 2.5 inch SSD or the M.2, but I already had a spare Crucial MX300 500 gigabyte 2.5 inch SSD laying around, so I figured I'd go ahead and use this. As of July 2019, the total cost on this build is $424. Now, if you wanted to go the mid-tower route, you could actually cut costs by about $45. Get a case that includes a power supply, and the micro ATX boards are a lot cheaper than the mini ITX boards. As for the build, I mean, it's pretty easy. Yeah, it's tight in this case, but if you've ever put a PC together in the past successfully, you could knock this out in under 20 minutes. 
I'm not really going to go in depth on how to build a PC. I've made a video like that in the past and there are thousands of others on YouTube. So just do a quick Google search and you'll find out. One thing to note with the motherboard and Pico PSU that I'm using, it does sit over the RAM. So you want to make sure you got low profile RAM and this Team Force Vulcan Z RAM works perfectly. The power supply fits right in there and as you can see it does clear the RAM. With most of these Pico power supplies, there's a ground connector and I just usually connect it to the closest motherboard mounting hole to the case. Don't forget your backplate or IO shield, should snap right in here. And just remember, if you're using an M.2 drive, make sure you connect it to the motherboard before you put everything in. Everything fits great in this case. All I need to do now is mount the motherboard and clean up the wiring. I'm also going to add my SSD and I'll show you exactly where that's going to sit. Now this is going to block a little bit of airflow. If you can afford a one terabyte M.2, I would recommend using that instead. But I've done a lot of thermal testing and the whole system does a really good job of keeping itself cool. I just need to connect my power button, my power LED, and the USB 3 on the side here. I'm going to clean it up with some zip ties, and when you're done, it'll look something like this. You can clean it up real nice with some zip ties, and everything just fits great in this little case. With the top on, it's time to get into some testing. I really like the look and size of this case. It's 7.9 inches long, 7.9 inches wide, and 3.3 inches tall. And by the way, this motherboard does have USB Type-C, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi built in. And if you really wanted to, you could use this in a vertical orientation. Now it's time to see how this thing performs. I got a lot to go over here. I want to get into some thermals, some power consumption, some 4K video playback, some gaming, and some other benchmarks. So let's get right into it. The main thing I'm always worried about when building these small form factor PCs is heat. Now this little case does have some pretty good ventilation, but we're only relying on the CPU cooler fan to get the air in and out. So the very first thing I did was run Prime95 for 15 minutes. This is a very extreme test. This is maxing out all four cores at 100%. The ambient room temperature for this test was 74 degrees Fahrenheit or 23.33 degrees Celsius. At the 15 minute mark, we were at 85 degrees C. Now this is not indicative of gaming, video streaming, web browsing. I've done tests on all that also. It'll be coming at the end. But this is actually pretty decent for the stock boxed cooler and this super small form factor case. Now that I was pretty confident about the temps of this little build, I went ahead and ran some benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 4, single core 4168 on the 3200G, multi core 12303. I also tested the 2200G recently with a single core of 4085 and a multi of 10928. The next test I ran was Cinebench R15, and I've been doing a lot of Ryzen APU testing lately, so I have results from pretty much everything except for the 200 series. 3200G, 582, the 22, 566, the 3400G, which has four extra threads, 834, and the 2400G, 818. The 3200G does have a higher clock than the older 2200G, so this is where our performance is coming from, from the base clocks and the boost clocks. Next up, we have the Blender BMW test. The 3200G finished this in 3 minutes and 21 seconds, the 22, 3 minutes and 29, the 34, 220 and the 24 230. The extra threads on the 34 and the 24 definitely help out when rendering inside a blender. Using a build like this as a HTPC for 4K video playback is going to work great. This is Big Buck Bunny 4K. This is an MP4. Amazing performance, no frame drops, and we're at a constant 60. I'm going to take it up a notch here. This is a 400 megabit per second 4K 10 bit MKV. This is running from the internal SSD, and the other video is actually running from an external drive. Even though this video file is 30 FPS, it's a super high bitrate. I mean, 400 megabits per second is kind of outrageous, but it handles it just fine. Moving over to some gaming, the 3200G actually holds its own against the 24 and the 34. This is Project Cars 2, 1080p, medium settings, no MSAA. We're getting an average of 37 with the 3200. The older 2200G got an average of 32. The new 3400G, 43, and the 2400G, 38. And keep in mind, I haven't overclocked the GPU on this whatsoever, so we can get better performance out of this. 
GTA 5 is just a strange one when it comes to these APUs. I'm at 1080p normal settings and the 3200G averaged 56 FPS, the exact same as my 3400G test. Rocket League 1080p mixed settings, an average of 71 on the 32, 68 on the 22, 82 on the 34, and 74 on the 24. Here's Doom at 1080p medium settings using the Vulcan backend, no MSAA, the 32 averaged 44, the 22 averaged 37, 34, 52, and the 24, 48. You can get an average of 61 FPS by taking all the settings down below on the 3200G. And finally, for the gameplay segment, Skyrim Special Edition 1080p medium settings, we averaged 33. Not great here, but the older Skyrim will run at a constant 60. Like I mentioned, I've been doing a lot of Ryzen APU testing lately, and here's some other games. I gotta say, the 3200G actually handles itself pretty well for a $99 APU. I also tested the total system power consumption from the wall. At idle, we average around 28. Web browsing with five tabs open and YouTube playing in the background, 36 watts. 4K video playback, 37 watts. 1080p gaming, 104 watts. And for my extreme test, which consists of running 3D Mark's Time Spy and Prime 95 together, 146 watts. And finally, one of the most important parts about these small form factor builds, CPU temperature. My ambient room temperature is 74 degrees Fahrenheit or 23.333 degrees Celsius. The system idled around 34 degrees Celsius, web browsing five tabs open with YouTube playing in the background, 40 degrees Celsius, 4K video playback, 41, 1080p gaming, now this was 30 minutes of GTA 5, I hit a maximum of 66 degrees Celsius, which is really good for the small form factor. Prime 95 running for 15 minutes, we hit a maximum of 85 degrees Celsius. Now you'll never see these temperatures unless you're maxing out your CPU, all four cores, 100% for 15 minutes straight. Personally, I don't mind running these APUs at 70 degrees Celsius all day. As long as I don't hit that thermal throttle and it underclocks the CPU, I'm fine with it. And even when I hit that 85 degrees Celsius running Prime 95, it still didn't throttle. I completely understand that some people are going to want cooler temps than this, and if that's the case, you're just going to need to build in a bigger case with more airflow. So in the end, I think it was a successful build, and performance is really good on this little APU. Now as for noise, you will hear this fan ramp up when it hits about 65 degrees Celsius, but it's not overwhelming. By the end of the Prime 95 test, the fan was spinning at 100%, and you could definitely hear it. It is audible at 100%, but under normal conditions, it's definitely bearable and it's not overwhelming at all. It's really not any louder than a PS4 Pro. I really love these small form factor builds, but they are a bit limited. Like I mentioned, you could get out a bit cheaper going the mid-tower route. Later on down the road, you could throw in a better CPU and a dedicated GPU and get much better performance. But if you're looking for small form factor and the performance you just saw is good for you, this is an awesome little option. All links for everything I mentioned will be in the description. I'll also have an alternative build down there for a mid-tower case. If you have any questions or you want anything else tested on this build, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.